Mitch in the tundra. Hey, welcome back to That'll Do Garage. Today we are uh, just tackling a small maintenance item. This is my wife's Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is a 2014 and it's got the eco diesel engine in it. Um, this is a Summit, which is I think it's the top trim package. So it has all the bells and whistles, it has air suspension, uh, automatic transmission, lots of cool traction control and four wheel drive stuff. Just doing an oil change today, but on the diesel, it's a little bit more involved. We're also gonna change the fuel filters as well. So uh, yeah, welcome back, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. All right, I just pulled the Jeep in the garage and I'm getting ready to do the oil change, and I gotta show you guys uh, my favorite part of doing an oil change on this thing. It's a funny little gimmick, but gearhead nerds like me think this is kind of cool. As I mentioned earlier, this Jeep has air suspension, so, um, I can just push these buttons here and change the ride height and that will make it much easier to get underneath it. So there's an air compressor that's running right now and you can kind of see it's super slowly going up. And after 30 seconds or so, it'll be like three inches higher. I can get my belly underneath there. It's kind of cool. It's like jacking itself up for me just right now. All right, so this is the Jeep Eco Diesel. It's a three liter. And we're gonna change the oil and the fuel filters today. I think we also have a couple fluids, you know, washer fluid, that kind of stuff. But this is what we look like under the hood here. And I wanna show you my little trick. Um, not everybody changes their own oil anymore, but I do. And so I like to write on the vehicle exactly what size the drain plug is and this is a fuel filter socket and this is our oil capacity so i'm gonna start digging into that and i'll show you guys along the way how we're doing well i pulled the cover off and uh, i'm gonna let this thing cool down just because it was running a couple minutes ago and i don't like to have a scalding hot engine when i change the oil but i do want to talk about modern diesels for a minute I mentioned this was a 2014, which you might not think is modern, but when you think about diesel technology, um, it is modern. And these, this era of diesel engine has had to be redesigned to cope with stricter emission standards. And this was kind of the first swing at um, making a clean diesel. And by that, what I mean is the emissions that come out the tailpipe You've probably seen some old trucks and there's big clouds of black or blue smoke and unburned fuel and you know all that stuff is is definitely harmful to the atmosphere so these vehicles these are also in dodge rams the same engine and i think sprinter vans they have uh, a couple of systems on them that help to clean up the emissions and the combustion process and it's all good stuff but it's a lot of complication and a lot of extra parts and frankly, a lot of headache, you know, um, but it's necessary to advance the technology and make a better engine. So I'll try to show you a little bit of that today. Basically, what we're talking about is an EGR system, which stands for exhaust gas recirculation. And it takes a little bit of the exhaust as it's running out of the engine and it puts it back into the intake and burns it twice. And that helps to... Uh, clean up the emissions a bit so another thing this jeep does is it has a diesel exhaust fluid system which we add right here this is obviously where we put our diesel fuel and then we have to add our def right here and that tank i think it's an eight gallon tank on this thing it takes a little bit of a special fluid and it injects it into the exhaust uh, upstream of a special particulate filter in the exhaust and that filter grabs the big harmful components and it holds them and every so often the system dumps in a bunch of diesel exhaust fluid and it cranks up the engine fuel in such a way that the exhaust gets really really hot thousands of degrees 
And it usually only does that when you're tooling down the highway 70 miles an hour, plenty of airflow, no real problem there. And the extreme heat burns off all those particles that are too big. And it kind of, you know, finishes the combustion of them. And then it comes with the tailpipe, it's less harmful. So that's a complicated system. The EGR, the exhaust gas recirculation is a complicated system. And to be fair, we have had some problems with this Jeep, um, with these systems in particular. In fact, this one has a modification about that. So this sticker here shows that the modifications were made to this vehicle, this VIN number on this date at this dealership. And basically what that is, is all these new systems I'm talking about, all these new emissions improving systems, they added a lot of complexity and problems to these. And there was quite a few people that had problems with their with their vehicle, uh, expensive problems with their vehicle with these systems. It's, it's like the technology is too new and it hasn't been sorted out yet. So eventually there was a class action lawsuit and this is the end result. Um, the uh, manufacturer was forced to change the software uh, that controlled these emission systems. And they also had to offer an extended warranty on specifically the emission system for these diesels. Uh, I wanna say it was normally like a 75,000 mile powertrain. And these emission systems are now covered up to like 70,000 miles beyond the date of modification. So this Jeep has about 120,000 on it right now, but the emission system and a lot of the major engine components are gonna be covered under warranty until like 142,000 or something like that because of this trouble with the emission system. So recently we had the check engine light come on and I spent some time on the forums online and I found out that there's a plastic intake manifold and that EGR is dumping really hot exhaust back into the plastic intake manifold and it can actually melt the manifold and start it on fire in some cases. Um, so that's what happened to this one, not the fire part, but the melting part. Uh, the plastic manifold get, gets all clogged up with soot and, and debris and then it melts and things go bad. So, so she spent about a week at the dealership uh, and they replaced a whole bunch of parts with no charge, which was pretty cool. I felt fortunate because that would have been, man, thousands and thousands of dollars for all those parts. Um, and I like this Jeep a lot. I really like the, the torque. This thing has crazy torque and it has a, a 7,200 pound towing capacity. Whereas my half ton truck has a 7,400 pound towing capacity. So this thing can full, can totally pull a full size trailer with a car on it or any, a large camper, you know, a lot of those things that aren't usually associated with uh, a midsize SUV like this. So I like this engine. Uh, my wife is not a fan. She would prefer it to just be a quiet gas engine that doesn't try to start itself on fire, which makes sense. So I think we'll be trading this in sometime soon. One more weird thing about this engine. Um, most of the time when you open a car's oil drain plug, 98% of the oil will drain out in about one to two minutes. And for some reason, I don't know if there's baffling in the engine or check valves or what, but this engine, you need to leave your oil drain pan under there for like 15 minutes. So take the drain plug off, just walk away, go check your air filter or fill your washer fluid or whatever, um, and just let it drain. Otherwise you're only gonna change maybe 70 to 80% of the oil. It's weird. I've seen a time, la time lapse video of this where it, it all runs out and then it looks like it's stopping and then all of a sudden like three more cups will come out and then it does that a couple of times. It's, it's really odd. Um, but anyway, put your drain pan under there, just walk away for a while.
you guys can uh, comment what oil you, you like to use in your three liter diesel. I use this Rotella T6 540. Um, the main reason I picked this one, cause I'm a nerd and I did research and all that emission stuff I was talking about, it needs uh, clean oil. There needs to be just a certain blend of additives and a really high, you know, purity. So that's what this is all about right here. This meets uh, whatever criteria for all these different manufacturers and Cummins and Allison and Caterpillar and Ford. And what that means is this is specially blended for a diesel engine with the modern day emission stuff. So this is what I use. And then another thing with diesels is the fuel system. Um, so I like to use this as well. I'm, I'm not sponsored by these guys. This is just what I buy off of Amazon. So this is like a everyday fuel treatment, basically. Uh, it cleans your fuel system, but it also boosts the cetane level, which is kind of a big deal. It's kind of like the octane on gas. Cetane on diesel is a measure of the energy in the fuel. So if you are way out in the middle of nowhere at a, a gas station that doesn't get much turnover, uh, they might have kind of low grade fuel and that can be harmful for your performance, your fuel economy and actually be dirty. Um, so this kind of stuff actually boosts all of that um, just a little bit. And you just put in a, a couple um, doses here whenever you get a tank of fuel and it's just, it's a low cost insurance. You know, this is, the benefits here are immediate with low cetane or dirty fuel, but the long-term like lubricity value of this, um, you know, that gets you from 100,000 miles to 200,000 miles, that kind of stuff. So I've been using this for a while, but again, I'm curious what you guys are using in your diesels. So please do comment and let me know what kind of oil you're using. I got a sweet pro tip for you here. You may have noticed I'm holding the bottle over on its side like this. A lot of people try to hold this like this and what happens then is you get this kind of glugging effect which splashes everywhere. So you just turn it on its side. It doesn't glug like that. I learned that in tech school, believe it or not, when I was in school to be a Ford mechanic. My professor actually taught me how to hold an oil jug. Isn't that weird? So we already talked about fuel a little bit. Um, another thing that you need to do on diesels is, is change the fuel filters often. And that's because on a gas engine vehicle, the gas doesn't really do anything. It just goes from the tank, it gets injected into the engine and burned. But on, on uh, diesels, oftentimes the, the fuel is pressurized to a very, very high pressure, like sometimes 15,000 PSI, um, just in small amounts and small, you know, concentrated areas. But because of that, you know, the pump is elaborate and the injection system is elaborate and complicated and expensive. So it's really important to keep diesel fuel clean and well lubricated. So to that end, I change my fuel filters every other oil change. And we're gonna do that today. I got these two from Amazon. Comes in a pair from Doc's Diesel. And this was like 22 bucks or something for two of them. Now I had been paying $20 for one of them previously and the dealership charges like $70 a piece for these. So $20 for two of them, it's a pretty good deal. So we're just gonna pop these in, but here's a close up of them. Um, they screw in underneath kind of the, the rear seats. Uh, they're accessible from the bottom, they just thread in to the canister and this is the media that filters out the fuel comes in from one side goes through the filter and comes out the other side and this catches all the garbage 
So you gotta be careful with the O-ring. It's a good idea to put like a drop of oil or diesel fuel on here to lubricate the O-ring so that it seats properly. But otherwise these just use a socket, just like the, the oil filter under the engine, same size. You just unth unthread them, pop them out, put the new one in, tighten her up. That's all there is to it. All right, all we have left is the oil filter. Oil's been drained, plug reinstalled, fuel filters changed. So the oil filter is located right there. You can kind of see the big housing. And it's under this air intake tube that runs right there. You might not have to take that tube off, but I like to take it off because this isn't something that you want to guess or cut corners on. You could easily cross thread the cap or double gasket it if you don't take the old gasket off or whatever so pull that tube off with just these two hose clamps and then I use this uh, 27 millimeter socket on the breaker bar to take it out and so I'm going to change it out right now
One thing to note, when you change those fuel filters, you need to prime the fuel system again. So I'm gonna just cycle the key a few times before I put my foot on the brake to start the engine. And that should run the fuel pump. And then you might have a little bit of a long crank, but that's okay. So there you can hear the fuel pump running. It's kind of a whining sound. It's still running. Now the pitch is starting to change, so pressure's starting to build. There it shut off. Start it right up. Well, I better lower my air suspension too. I don't want the wife going off-roading. Well, that's gonna do it for today. Jeep Grand Cherokee, eco diesel oil change, fuel filter change, nothing special, just standard issue maintenance stuff. But I hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be lots more coming. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.